Hello and welcome to another weekly writing vlog. I am currently watching Getting Higgy With It, April, yay. I said writing vlog, I meant reading vlog, although maybe I'll talk about writing. I haven't done any writing for a while really because I've basically worked for the last seven days to try and... Uh, I said in my last vlog I've got an unexpected invoice from the tax man for 1500 quid, which for you Americans that's like $2,000 or something. So I have to do a lot of work to uh, make sure I can I can afford to pay this instalment and then I have to pay tax again in July and I'd saved money to pay the tax in July which I now need to spend to pay the tax now. Anyway, uh, I'm still reading Appointment with Death by Agatha Christie. I'm not gonna lie, this is super dull so far. I'm about a third of the way in. I don't care for any of the characters. Nothing much has really happened. The main plotline seems to be about, like, everyone is in awe of this motherly matron, matriarch of the family, who has basically, like, hypnotised everybody so that they're afraid to leave. And I'm just there reading it, being like, just leave. You don't... You don't need to, to like, and that like people are saying, oh, we'll have to kill her. It's like, no, just leave. I don't understand. So, and that's like the central point of this book so far. Nobody's died yet. Like, it's just, oh, I don't. Very disappointed, especially because it says a classic Hercule Poirot mystery. And it's, on the back it says, twice as brilliant as Death on the Nile, which is one of my favourite of Agatha Christie's books. I would say it's ten times worse than Death on the Nile, and that's being nice, but hey-ho. So yeah, I'm going to try and film a few videos today while doing some work. I had a massive panic attack last night, which wasn't good as well. Uh, it was really weird, actually. I was sitting there, and I was doing fine, and then suddenly I couldn't breathe. So then I was like, oh, well, this isn't good. So I went to lie down on my bed and put the fan on to blow some cool air at me, because also I got really, really hot, and then that was fine. I was there for, like, two minutes, and then suddenly I was really, really cold, to the point at which, like, my hands and my feet felt like icicles. I actually got the the uh, the heater out and was like there with my hand over the vent in the heater, like burning my hand trying to warm it up. And then as soon as I took it away and put it on my face, it still felt ice cold. So, uh, and then I eventually managed to fall asleep. And then I woke up like two hours later, just dripping with sweat and like having all these weird fever dreams. It was horrible, basically. So that's why I'm not particularly Cheerful, I guess. I don't know. I'm not in a bad mood. I'm just drained. I'm drained. <laughs> it's Sunday. I might make some food in a bit. Driving lesson tomorrow if I can get up at 11 a.m. Yeah, there's a there's a there's some. In fact, it's happening right now. There's some live music on in Wickham, but I'm I'm not going to go along to it because I'm trying to. Again, I've got to save money now for uh, for for the tax man. Look at him. How are you, Biggs? You good? I think he's confused because I'm defrosting the freezer. Okay. Oh, am I blurry? Are we good? Okay, so it is now Wednesday. It's been a crazy couple of days, really. Um, I had a driving lesson on Monday, which went really badly. I had a driving lesson today, which went pretty well. In fact, he said it was my best lesson so far, so that is good. I've also been reading some stuff, been doing loads of work, haven't really tidied up very much. But I'm working on it, and I have at least done some reading. So... I finished reading Appointment with Death by Agatha Christie. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in my last video or not, because this could also just be here because I need to review it. I wasn't particularly uh, into it, to be honest. Basically, the first half of the book is all just a build-up to this old woman getting murdered, and you know she's going to get murdered. So it just feels a little bit tedious. And then the actual... Um, you know, the mystery itself wasn't particularly interesting, or at least I didn't think so. So, uh, yeah, it was okay. The The main thing that I did like about it was the setting, because it's set in, I think, Syria, on a, like, an archaeolo archaeological dig. So you've got people, like, sleeping in caves and in tents and stuff, which I thought was cool. But, uh, yeah, not a best. I, I gave that three out of five in the end. And then... I read Gerard Manley Hopkins as Kingfisher's Catch Fire. So this is number two in the Penguin mini Little Black Classics. So uh, considered unpublishable in his lifetime, the Victorian priest's groundbreaking experimental verse on nature's glory and despair. So 
the problem with it really for me was that it's just not my kind of poetry. I'm going to read you some in a second. What I did like were his journal entries, in fact. So there was mo it was mostly poetry and then the last five pages or so were some of his journal entries. And the very last entry in this is uh, April the 8th. The ash tree growing in the corner of the garden was felled. It was lopped first. I heard the sound and looking out and seeing it maimed there came at that moment a great pang and I wished I and I wished to die and not to see the inscapes of the world destroyed anymore. Which I just think that's more like poetic than his poetry. Uh, let's do this one. The, oh no, I've just dropped my book. Here we go. Spring and fall to a young child. Margaret, are you grieving over Golden Grove on leaving? Leaves like the things of man you, with your fresh thoughts care for, can you? Ah, as the heart grows older, it will come to such sights colder. By and by, nor spare a sigh, though worlds of one would leaf me all lie. And yet you will weep and know why. Now no matter, child, the name, sorrow springs are the same. Nor mouth had, no, nor mind expressed, what heart heard of, ghost guessed. It is the blight man was born for. It is Margaret you mourn for. So yeah, I gave it three out of five. It was it was all right. The uh, journals were my favourite part of it, but it wasn't as good as that uh, the first one which I read last week. And uh, then oh also I finished reading a sorry I also finished reading a bedtime book which was this Gene C Meister and Kevin J Mulcahy the future workplace experience. So this is another one of the books that basically I have a client who pays me to read them and then I write up like a spark note summary, I think 2,000 words of uh, the book. So I've actually been writing up my review of that this evening, which is up to 800 words. So uh, we're getting there. And uh, yeah, it was okay. It was a, just a 3.5 out of 5 for me actually. What I did say in my Goodreads review, I think, is that it's been better than some of the other ones purely because so the, su the sub headline or whatever there is uh, 10 rules for mastering disruption in recruiting and engaging employees and so I just think the fact that it was broken into those 10 rules and those 10 sections just made it a lot easier for me as a reader to sort of take in the information but also for me now going back and writing this summary of it it just it's just a much cleaner way of presenting the information I think so it is one of the better ones I would say that I've read so far not that I would necessarily recommend it to anyone watching because I don't think it's I can't think of anybody I'd recommend it to but you know and then here we have The Mirror Cracked from Side to Side by Agatha Christie so this is a Miss Marple book I'm about halfway through I think. I'm enjoying this more than the last one. The last one I should know is a Poirot book so that could also have something to do with it because I generally prefer Marple. Uh, as usual with Marple as well she's playing quite like a quite like a nuanced role you know she's not um, she's not taking centre stage in the investigation but she is helping it along with a few hints and that's when I think uh, Christie's characters and her detective characters are at their best. I, I get annoyed with Poirot he's, he's just he's too arrogant. So anyway that's where I'm at at the moment. I'm now going to crack on with some more reading and stuff and uh, going to edit some videos. I'm going to uh, do some more work as well. And we'll just see how the evening goes, I guess. I'll, pr I'll probably update you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Hello. Uh, it's Thursday. All right, it is Thursday. We've come down here to see this little munchkin. Say hello to the internet, Biggie. You know, everybody only watches me so they can see you. Uh, Biggie's going to be chilling at home. I am going to the radio in a minute. I'm going to the radio, Biggie. I'm going to go and play some songs. I don't know how well it's going to go because I feel very nasal today. But we'll be right. I'll, I'll sing some stuff. When are Biggs? The way you go. I can't stop laughing when I open my eyes and see the world has never changed. I used to be a soldier with my hopes and dreams and the light has never died. So when I wake up in the morning and check my emails, I sometimes wonder if I'm better alive, but it's better than chasing dust. And now if you see me and I'm smiling, it's a lie You can believe in I opened up a brand new 
notebook Tried to learn to drive a car I never understand all the people who think that the stars can be rearranged I used to be a soldier with my hopes and dreams And the light has never died So when I wake up in the morning and check my emails I sometimes wonder if I'm better alive But it's better than chasing dust And now if you see me and I'm smiling It's a lie You can believe in Everything is broken every once in a while And there's nothing you can do But when you fall asleep Your name will be in lights So when the weather gets windy And the rain starts to fall It don't fall on one man's house And your neighbour might be the one Who wants to save you Tell my friends I'm sorry Cause they've never felt so far I can't stop coughing when I try to sing And my parents tell me I'm deranged I used to be a spider with a web of deceit But I only ever lied to myself So when I get into the car and check my seatbelt Sometimes wonder what to do in my life I'll do anything but chasing dust So now if you see me and I'm frowning It's a lie You can believe in Yay! Thank you. I'll let you have a break now. Lovely. We'll have some ads and another... Another song by someone else, then we'll come back. Do you need okay. to do a throw We'll leave it, leave it to the professional. <laughs> oh, God, my hair. What is going on? <laughs> Hello. Um, I'm hungover a little bit, but not too bad. Oh, my eyes look blue today. Hello, blue eyes. Um... Yeah, let me get comfortable. Where are we? So, I can't remember when I last filmed. I think it was a couple days ago. So, last night, uh, Jordana came over and I made pizza and I showed you the pizza because it looked good. It looked so good that I was like, I'm, I'm just going to break. You know, like, the, the, the how weird it is to, like, try and vlog things in front of people. But I was like, no, I have to film part of this pizza because it was so good. In fact, it's, there's some left, but it's mostly gone. She also took a... Right, I made some bread because I was going to have hummus and we were drunk so she took a bite out of my bread probably yeah so I was reading the mirror cracked from side to side by Agatha Christie which I've finished reading I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5 it's pretty good I mean it's got marple in it as well it's not Christie's best but it was enjoyable quite a long one as well for for Christie it came to like 300 and 50 pages in that edition whereas quite a lot of them are like 250 something like that but uh, yeah really enjoyed it and then I read the Saga of Gunlaug Serpent Tong, which is uh, like by Anonymous, because it's uh, an Icelandic folk classic, it says, uh, I think it's Icelandic. Ranging across Scandinavia, England, and Ireland, a Viking Age epic of two poets in doomed pursuit of Helga the Fair. There we go. And there's, so there's some little bits of poetry in it as well. But also, I like, I really liked actually, just like, um, like little ideas in it. Like, so there was a. Uh, a duel between the two poets and uh, the, f the one poet struck first and his sword snapped and then the metal went through the air and just nicked the face of his opponent and his opponent was like I submit to you that I have won this duel because your weapon is broken and he was like and I submit to you that I have won this duel because I got first blood and so they had to like say it was a tie and then they decided to voyage together to like another country where because then they made dueling illegal it was good. It was good. I've explained that really poorly, but it was good. Uh, Biggie is in the window over there. Yes, just through the lights. And my current bedtime book, bedside book, 
is Dune Messiah by Frank Herbert, which I'm reading as part of January. So I'm about a quarter of the way in now, but I only started it a couple days ago, so I think I should finish it by the end of the month, hopefully. I made creamed carrot soup, and I'm watching Tim Minchin. So I just woke up, it's like 4pm in the afternoon, because my sleep pattern is terrible. Look at that. Look at it big, oh. Don't run away. It is snowing. Yeah. What is going on, Biggie? Bloody horns going off everywhere. No one can fucking drive in the snow. Uh, I'm glad I don't have a driving lesson today, is all I have to say. Uh. Oh, it's blurry. Hello, hello, Dane here. It is a Tuesday. Uh, usually is the open mic night at the Chilton Taps here in High Wycombe, but um, that's not on because of all the snow and stuff. However, I'm not too worried because I, I was going to go, but I'm not like in a yeah party mood, so I wasn't going to drink. I was going to have lemonade and um, possibly not even play and just listen to people. So instead, I'm gonna have an evening at home and be productive, which includes both doing work work and some booktube. I've really caught up quite a lot, actually, in terms of my editing and whatnot. Um, most stuff is now, like, not late or not too late. Like, I've just posted my Q4 favorites of last year, and then I'm gonna have my overall favorites of last year. I've got this month's indie read-along videos ready to go this month. So most stuff now should be kind of kept up to date. We're all up to date with our wrap-ups and I'll do my January wrap-up near the start of February. So all of that is good. Uh, I wanted to update you on some books that I've read. So I've read Thomas De Quincey on murder considered as one of the fine arts. So this is Penguin Mini Black classic number four. This, the provocative early 19th century essayist casts a blackly comic eye over the aesthetics of murder through the ages. And yeah, I gave this, uh, I think a 3.5 or a four, I can't remember which of the two. I was a bit confused about it because I'm not sure whether he's presenting it as his own original research or whether he's like reporting that's unlike what somebody else had said because the, the intro of it I wasn't paying too much attention to be honest. Yeah it was quite interesting and to look at some of the different ways that we as a race have looked at and dealt with murder throughout the years basically. Then we have Michael G. Munn's Myth Connections, a short story collection of classical myth in the modern world. So basically Munn's is an indie author, he's also written a book called Zeus is Dead, which I really enjoyed. He's actually got the sequel coming out soon, it's called Zeus is Undead. So I'm going to be uh, checking that out as well when it comes out. But basically, yeah, these are all short stories based on ancient Greek mythology. So for example, somebody discovers like a portal to the underworld uh, in, a ba in their basement. And yeah, and uh, there's also a, an, an, an excerpt from Greece is Dead, uh, from Zeus is dead, <laughs> from Zeus is dead as well. I don't know why I said why I said Greece because I was thinking about my finger because I was poking the screen to bring it into focus. Uh, but yeah, um, would we'll check check out Michael G. Mons, especially if you like kind of comic fantasy. Then I read Friedrich Nietzsche, aphorisms on love and hate, and uh... <laughs> yeah, sorry, got confused. And on the back it says the iconoclastic German philosophers' blazing maxims on revenge, false pity, and the drawbacks of marriage. So we have some of, kind of some essays and stuff, and then some literal aphorisms as well, like the life of the enemy. Whoever lives for the sake of combating an enemy has an interest in the enemy staying alive. Sounds like Sun Tzu almost there. Love and hatred are not blind, but are blinded by the fire they themselves carry with them. So everyone's always told me I'd enjoy Nietzsche, just because I'm INTJ, I'm Myers-Briggs personality type, and the cliche is that they love Nietzsche, basically. Yeah, I did really enjoy reading this stuff, and um, you know, gave me lots of food for thought, and I'll, I'll be reading more of Nietzsche in the future. 
Which brings me on to what I'm currently reading, which is Charles Bukowski, The Absence of the Hero. And this is basically a combination of short stories and fiction that he wrote throughout the years. I'm about halfway through. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's a misogynist and whatnot, but I still like his writing. He's a perfect example of, like, I don't know, one of the authors where I'd, I enjoy the art enough that I can overlook the the author, if that makes sense. I separated the art from the artist. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to finish reading Bukowski, and then I guess I'll be on to another Penguin Mini Black Classic. So, yeah, I'll, I'll update you soon. Now to do some editing. Mm. All right, I went to a, an open mic last night, but I forgot to take my camera, so sorry about that. But um, yes, it was it was lovely. I'm going to give you a quick update on what I've finished reading. So, I've finished reading The Absence of the Hero by Charles Bukowski. Uh, it was all right. I think I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. It's not his best, but, um, you know, I still enjoy Bukowski's stuff. The what I did say, my main criticism was that there wasn't really any flow to it. So, it was hard to tell why they'd pick sort of certain stories, you know, and, and why they put them in that order. But it was fine. Um, then I read John Ruskin, Traffics, the blurb on this is The radical Victorian art critic's excoriating defence of dignity and creativity in a world obsessed by money Which I put in my review I think is a pretty good description I actually gave that one a three and a half stars But I did see on, uh, I think it was on Goodreads that it got loads of like two stars and one stars But I thought it was decent enough then I read Walt Whitman on the beach at night alone, and I've got to be pro I've got to be honest. The problem I have with Whitman is that I have read I've read Leaves of Grass, and I just wasn't really into it, and it took a long time, you know. And uh, so yeah, this was it was alright. It was a three out of five. I enjoyed it more than when I was reading Leaves of Grass, but it still wasn't my my favourite thing in the world. Then I picked up Pu Song Ling, Wailing Ghost. So. Uh, these delightful miniature tales of macabre hauntings, monsters and magic tricks are classical China's greatest stories. And I'm right at the end of it now, so I can pretty much wrap it up. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a four out of five, I would say. It's almost like a mixture between what, of like the Canterbury Tales and Edgar Allan Poe or something. It's really strange. So yeah, and then up next, because I'm going on holiday tomorrow with my mother uh, to the Forest of Dean. So uh, I'm going to pick up the Backman books, which is a bit of a chunker. I have read The Running Man, which is the last one in it. So I've just got to read Rage, The Long Walk and Roadwork. And I'm really excited about re uh, reading The Long Walk and Rage as well, because it's no longer in uh, circulation. So uh, I always try to pick up a big chunky book when I go off on holiday. So I'll read that and take a few others with me as well. And that's about it for this week's uh, reading vlog. So I'm going to do my next one will just basically be my holiday but with my reading vlog thrown in as well, I guess. And, uh, yeah, in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.